Beautiful, isn't she? Here's how to display full colour images on an OLED display using an ESP32 microcontroller. I've divided the video into three parts. First, we'll assemble the hardware. Then we'll prepare the images. Finally, we'll write the sketch and upload it to the ESP32. This screen I'm using is the Waveshare 1.5 inch OLED. You can get these on Amazon. They're not the cheapest OLEDs around, but they have top-notch build quality and the image looks amazing. By comparison, here's an ST7735S 80x160 TFT screen sourced from eBay. Sure, it's a smaller display, but there is noticeable fringing around the top and right edges. What I also like about this Waveshare is that it has screws that enable it to be fastened to whatever device you're building with it. That's enough free advertising for Waveshare, let's get this thing working. So this is the wiring scheme that I'm using and it took a lot of trial and error to get this to work with the ESP32 and I did also have some help from a couple of Redditors. So the critical ones are marked in bold font and these have to go to the exact pins on the ESP32. So the OLED has seven pins in total. So starting at the top, VCC has to go to 3.3 volts on the ESP32. GND is ground, so that goes to GND on the ESP32. The pin marked DIN has to go to GPIO23. This is absolutely crucial, it must go to this one. The same with CLK, this has to go to GPIO18. For the remaining three pins, these can connect to potentially any pin on the ESP32. However, I've used 0, 2 and 4. So you could use other digital pins just in case you're already using these. Next, we need to prepare our images. So I advise you to resize the images to the dimensions you want to use. And it's probably best to resize them in a photo package. So you could use the GIMP. I use a PaintShop Pro. I think this is probably older than most of my audience, but it does the job. So I would resize it in the package and then save it as a PNG. So next we're using a free piece of software you can download called LCD Image Converter. There's a link to it in the description below. This is a little free utility and it's really useful for changing the images into a format we can use with the ESP32. So I did previously resize the image to 128 by 128 pixels so it will fit perfectly on the screen of the OLED. So what I've done is to go to File, Open and then open the image and you can see it's displayed here. The next thing to do is to go to Options and click on Conversion. So a new window will appear. So the first thing we need to do is to change the preset drop down list here. And the one we want is R5G6B5. So the Adafruit graphics library wants the images in this format. So it's really important to change this. So that should change now. The next thing to do is to click on image. And block size needs to be changed to 16 bit. So we've done that. And now there's a preview button here. So click on preview and you'll see a whole load of uh, gobbledygook here. So this is our image data and we can copy and paste this directly into our sketch. So instead of doing this, you can press Ctrl and A to select all and then press Ctrl and C to copy it. Now I'll walk through the actual sketch for the ESP32. I'll link to this in the description so you can download it. So at the top, we set the screen width and the screen height. So obviously if you're using a different OLED, then change these. Next we include the libraries we need. And the most important ones are the graphics library. So Adafruit GFX we need and the SSD1351. So again, you can go to tools and manage libraries and then search for these and make sure they're installed. Next we put in the connections. So these two are critical, 18 and 23. And these pins you can change if you want to use different pins. So if you're already using 0, 2 or 4, then you could change them to others. I should just mention this code is derived from the example. So if you go to File, Examples, and where is it? 1351 Library, and Test. 
So if you want to test your screen, then this one is a good sketch to load. So I have copied some of the code from this one. So we have colors here. We don't really need to use the colors for this, but you might want to put some text on or something later. This is the critical line. This actually initializes the screen. So we send in the pins, screen width and height, which we've already defined. I just remember I've left some code in from an old test, so just ignore that. I think I'll take that out actually. Okay, the next thing we do is to define the image width and the image height. After that, we have a constant with the image data. And you will notice that before we had all the image data from the little LCD utility. So basically, you just need to paste it into this variable. Just make sure you have the closing angle bracket here. And there's quite a lot of it here. You could put it in a separate file, especially if you're using several images, but some people say it's a good idea, some people say it's not. The progmem attribute is really important. This is kind of a throwback to the Arduino Uno, but you can also use it on the ESP32. It's important to put it in because the graphics library requires it to be in that part of memory. So let's scroll down. And there's not much more code. Right, so we've initialized everything. Now the setup, I have included these serial ports if in case you want to do some troubleshooting and debugging and you can monitor that. So we have to initialize the display. So we'll use tft.begin. If you want to rotate the display, you could uncomment this. Obviously the display I've used in this tutorial is square, so it doesn't make a huge amount of difference, but it might be useful if you want to mount it a particular way and have the wires hanging down rather than at the side. You can uncomment this if you want to clear the screen. This is quite a useful routine. So to draw the image, we use tft.drawrgb bitmap. It's fairly straightforward. The first number here is the X position. Second is Y position, i.e. the vertical. Then the bitmap data, followed by image width and height. So in C Sharp, there's a similar function. And if you make these smaller than the dimensions of your image, it will automatically resize. But note that it doesn't resize with this particular library. So they have to be the actual width and height of your bitmap image. And in this example, I've put the loop in because you need a loop function or it won't compile, but we're not actually using the loop. So now I'll connect the ESP32 and upload the sketch. And you might need to hold down the boot button while it's compiling. Okay, so when it says connecting, ensure you hold down the boot button. And when it says writing, you can stop holding it. So it's uploading now. And that's it, the display is rendered. Once again, I'll just warn you that although there's a lot of really cheap displays floating around on AliExpress and eBay, maybe even Amazon again, just be aware that it can be really difficult to get these other displays working. I'll try and make some more tutorials about the display. I do have one about moving sprites, so check that video out. Thanks for watching.